Hello, everybody. I think we're ready to start this morning. Um, you have one big panel here uh, that will be talking about uh, measurements of performance. And the slides are coming up. Now it's up. Yay, thank you. Uh, so my name is Sonia Novkovic and I will just give you a quick introduction um, and we'll have uh, each speaker speak for about 10 minutes that, will, that should take us an hour altogether and then have half an hour for questions and comments from you guys. Um, we're, uh, the panel is about uh, measuring and reporting on cooperative difference. So we will be in this panel talking about the general overview of the kinds of uh, measurements we have in mind for cooperatives and the kinds of tools that we have been developing within our various uh, roles. Uh, one of the roles you see on this big panel and my slides and others, some of the others, uh, is the Measuring the Cooperative Difference Research Network, which is a CURA, Community University Research Alliance, uh, that we have in uh, the uh, uh, from Ottawa, uh, the CCA is a partner institution. And then we have uh, Marie-Paul Robichaud from another Cura uh, in the French Canada, uh, and she will be speaking to you a bit later. And we have uh, Russ Christensen, who is not a part of the network, but who inspired some of us in the network uh, to actually use the tool that he has uh, developed earlier. So we'll be talking in general terms in this panel. The next panel in this same room will talk uh, more specifically about sustainability uh, sustainability, measuring sustainability uh, and, and the scorecard that's been developed uh, by Russ and, uh, uh, and by uh, some of our researchers. Uh, and then there's another stream of measurements panels and that one is um, at 4 o'clock today um, and it's Jessica, Lou and Linda who are speaking that. Uh, we will give you the number if you're interested of the room because it's, it's in another room, not in this one. So, so there's a whole stream of, of uh, panels that we've organized in, in order to tackle this uh, question. Uh, many others uh, in the social economy research networks have also worked on these issues and, and, and on the question of how to measure performance in cooperatives. So what I will do is just put up a slide um, that actually I uh, extracted from a presentation that I gave uh, in Cancun at the ICA research uh, conference in November. Um, that, that one day seminar. And basically what I'm uh, just laying out here is that cooperatives, uh, that we're coming from, from an understanding that uh, there is a value in measuring performance for cooperatives that is uh, uh, slightly different than other types of organizations. And there are different reasons why cooperatives need to measure what they do, particularly their social, social and community impact, obviously, because the financial indicators are not difficult to come by. Um, but why they need to understand, uh, why they need to measure uh, what they do is, uh, here I have four reasons, I'm sure you will come up with four more, at least, <laughs> but the four that I kind of thought about was, uh, were that uh, one, one of the reasons you know, why we need to measure what we do is to understand this different business model because it is still poorly understood um, in the sector and outside of it. Um, and uh, its purpose, its advantages and its disadvantages. So where do cooperatives work well, where do they not work well, why and so on. So, so there has to be some, uh, there have to be some sets of measures uh, devised that are going to help us understand that business model and its difference, if any. Um, to understand the second reason why we need to measure what we do is to understand how cooperative identity, defined by the principles and values of cooperation, uh, how that creates a strategic advantage in the business context. So we are all again coming from an understanding that cooperatives, because they do have a movement behind them, have something that other types of businesses do not, and that they should really work into you know into their business uh, practices the way that they apply principles and values. So this is in part what uh, motivated many of us here to actually try to devise those kinds of measures that are going to highlight the cooperativeness, if you will. And then uh, the third reason why we need to measure what we do is to understand the impact of cooperative sector on people and communities, in part to influence policies, but also to, to actually really understand how we impact community that's different from creating jobs that anybody, you know, any other kind of business will do as well. 
uh, are those uh, longer term jobs? Are they better jobs? Are they, you know, so are they worse? Uh, so what we, we just need to be able to say more about what it is co-ops do. But community impact in particular, we all know that any cooperative CEO will tell us they do the right thing, or they try to do the right thing. What does that mean? How do we quantify that? Do we need to quantify that? But at least we need to understand whether really there is any difference. Um, and so this is uh, in part work with credit unions that some of us are doing and, and so on. And the last is to achieve public awareness because again, we all seem to uh, hear all the time uh, that this uh, business model is the best kept secret and it continues to be a secret. It still isn't in our textbooks. It still isn't in our curricula. Uh, not nearly uh, as much as it should be. And so achieving public awareness of the size, the scope, and the benefits of the cooperative sector and its promotion, uh, measurements such as the Global 300 list, which now is uh, the, the monitor, uh, and, and similar kinds of efforts from the ICA and others in the cooperative movement, is also part of this bigger picture. So I'll leave you with that, and uh, we'll get a sense of what people are doing and what kinds of measurements they've been applying. And as I said, more detail will come on, on each of these later in, in the following panels. Thank you. Who's next? So I'm talking about the project, the Prairie Node, the Prairie Clusters involved in one of the Prairie Cluster projects on um, measuring the impact of credit unions on their communities, on their members and their communities. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of that. And we do have a panel, I think it's 415, I don't remember what room. We'll figure it out later. Um, so, the purpose of our study is to better understand the precise benefits that credit unions provide to their communities, specifically the ways that credit unions help their members create wealth, financial stability, well-being, and skills. We want to focus on impact. Um, what we're learning is that it is, as Sonia already said, it's somewhat easier to measure some of the regular business and financial um, aspects. but putting them together, understanding how they interact and then impact not just the, the members themselves, but also the whole community. We focused on credit unions actually just to start the process of unpacking some of this because credit unions are, they have such great records. They, um, they actually are involved in helping people own assets. And so there's, there's, and they do a lot of stuff in their community. So they were a great example to start with. After, I don't know, probably a year or two of looking at a bunch of literatures about, you know, measuring social impacts and things like that, we came up with a huge list of indicators that we then later tried to um, break down into smaller units in terms of how we ask questions on a survey, how we ask interview questions. We also had a variety of questions for managers of credit union versus members versus board members, that kind of thing. Um, but this is the list. The, the first one is the obvious one, the economic activities, the standard statistics. Plus, we also want to try to look at what were the types of exchanges and transactions, particularly on a community level. Um, the role of the credit union in the market in terms of um, what kind of market share it had, because that also helps to explain the impact. Um, the asset ownership, both of the um, credit union itself as well as the members, and then investment in other social enterprises, because that was an important, another important way to look at impact in community. If the credit union was able to actually invest in other enterprises and or was able to lend money for those developments. The financial transparency is also important because everybody knows for a co-op, we know or we're supposed to know <laughs> what's happening to the entity, right? As members, we're supposed to vote on budgets, we're supposed to know what's happening in the financials. That financial transparency is also a financial literacy, right? And that, again, can be another impact on community. 
employment and quality of employment. Sonia mentioned those already. The economic linkages, where the credit union itself actually spends their money, how they recirculate local dollars, what's the multiplier, that's actually going to be our hardest piece, it looks like. And then their impact on community development, not just the fact that they're in the community, but what other things do they do? They donate to community, they sponsor clubs and contests and things, but they also invest in the community in um, some very specific ways sometimes. Education and training, another one that's pretty obvious to people in the co-op movement. Um, but in this case, we're also looking not just at how board, staff, and members are trained, but also what kind of training spills over to community members, either because the existence of the credit union, because of what the credit union members are doing, or because of campaigns that the credit union is doing. Diversity of members also is another great indicator. Are you really hiring local? Are you hiring local indigenous? Are you hiring women? Um, what's the composition of your management team, your board, etc.? And then, of course, the democratic economic participation, that's another really hard one, right? Because it's not really about if you just went to your AGM meeting, right? It's somehow if you did more than that. Um, and how we tease that out again, some of that we're trying to figure out how we get that out of uh, interviews as opposed to just whether you check off a couple of things on a survey. And then the leadership and social capital development, also hard to exactly articulate. One of the things we're having trouble with is getting people, when we ask them a question, to be able to answer us in a way that's not just, oh yeah, I attended that meeting, or oh yeah, I've been on the board, um, because we're trying to figure out not just whether you do some of those perfunctory things, but then what kind of skills you developed, how active has that made you in the rest of your life, things like that. And some of those are hard to pull out. Even in an interview, we found people aren't used to being asked that kind of impact question, and so it's been hard to, to get uh, answers. So I think I sort of went over this one. We already, uh, great. We already talked about the list of indicators. We did a huge sort of matrix of them and then narrowed them down. We developed questions first for managers and board members and then a few um, lower level staff and then members. We tested the questions with the managers. We worked very closely. Oh, that's the other piece, the close connection between us as academics and um, our credit union partners. And you'll also hear a lot more about that in our afternoon session. And we worked very closely with Affinity Credit Union and also early on we piloted some of our questions with Advantage, um, both in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. And now we're creating an online survey. We actually got, our big coup is that we got the provincial um, SAS Central to include, I think it's seven of our questions on their provincial-wide <coughs> online survey. So we're gonna reach about 1,500 people in the next, uh, over the summer with some of our questions on impact. So that's, that was one of our main goals and we already reached that. We're also doing um, interviews at, with at least one or two credit unions. And then, I think this is my last slide. So as I said, the big issue is what is the value added to credit unions? How can we get at the impacts? So, uh, how to understand the full set of impacts, right? The financials aren't really enough. They don't tell you enough about that. We need to expand our notion of what we think are impacts and how we measure it, because as I said, even when we start to ask a question that we think is an impact question, um, if people find it actually hard to even answer, so then how to help people think it through, or how do we get some kind of answer that then we can analyze for impact, how we consider that impact. That's back to then creating that multiplier. And the creative use of interdisciplinary, maybe new tools. That's our new challenge. And I'm done. So our session, Co-op Difference in Financial Co-ops, is room 3220 at the 430 session, when you all be tired. <laughs> Just have beer there and I'll come. <laughs> yeah, we have to promise something, right? Or a strip tease or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Oh, thank you.
just before I start, I hope it's not part of my time, um, um, in, the, in the French uh, program, il y a une erreur, um, uh, J1 et H1 sont reversés. Oui. Alors, si vous voulez aller à une heure, um, uh, I'll go back to English, <laughs> to the uh, cooperative uh, development session, and you want to go to the one in French. Um, make sure that you reverse uh, J1 and H1. Okay, um, so I'm very, very pleased to be here. It's great to hear uh, uh, everyone together speaking about, uh, about measurement, and uh, we're uh, hoping that uh, you come to some of the other sessions as we go through. Um, today I'd like to just very briefly introduce it. You'll hear more later. We want to talk about, a little bit about our partnership, uh, why measure cooperative sustainability, the scorecard project that is our project with uh, uh, some partners, and next steps. Um, so um, our main partner, we're very pleased to say, is Cobb Atlantic uh, in, uh, in Eastern Canada. Leo Leblanc, you'll hear from later today, Monique Bourque and Romeo Cormier. Academic partners from two universities, Mount St. Vincent and L'Université de Moncton. Um, the, the scorecard phase involved pilot project cooperatives, uh, in, in the end five of them, and uh, we're moving to the implementation stage and there will be um, more cooperatives uh, partnering research there. Um, just a bit of background about Coop Atlantic. Um, you can just sort of read those figures. I can send you the PowerPoint if you want later. Um, but they're a regional cooperative and the consumer cooperatives are the ones that are our focus uh, for our research. For those of you who may not be from Canada, the east uh, is um, east of Quebec <laughs> and sort of underneath. <laughs> but you get a sense of the geographic uh, size there. Um, and the, uh, the population is, is quite small. Um, in, uh, in Atlantic Canada, we're, we're uh, under two and a half million people. So, voices from the sector in terms of what to measure um, uh, cooperative sustainability. Uh, this is from the ICA. Cooperatives driven by their values have in many ways been pioneers of socially responsible business behavior, but it hasn't been uh, doing as much as it should in measuring it. We need consistent and rigorous frameworks. Well, we're working with rigorous. I don't know how consistent we're all being because we, we're working with uh, you know, different frameworks, but uh, there is interesting overlap. So that, that statement was sort of an external audience. Um, I took this uh, from Sustainability Solutions Group. I don't know if any of them are here, um, but it's a wonderful website to go visit. Conducting and publishing annual sustainability assessments is a way for us to be transparent about our operations and accountable um, toward our members, associate members, etc. They also see it as a, a demonstration effect, engaging and inspiring other organizations, particularly cooperatives, to track and report. And then lastly, the annual sustainability assessment informs our annual and five-year plans. So these, these two together, these two uh, organizations, I think, give a, a pretty good sense of uh, some of the key reasons that you co-ops might want to do this. Um, I won't read all these, but um, our pilot cooperatives um, in the design phase themselves told us some of the ways in which they felt um, the, uh, doing the scorecard was uh, valuable to them. I particularly like that third one, tired of negativity. <laughs> um, this is a positive action. Um, consumer cooperatives in the East are, are, are um, facing some big challenges. Um, I don't know that we all use sustainability in it all the same ways, and certainly in the cooperatives that we work with, they, 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 have, uh, they have different conceptions of it. Um, we drew our inspiration, the academics and Co-op Atlantic, from Russ's early work, um, but that doesn't mean that the co-ops um, have the same approach. I think the first two little bullets that I've got there probably do capture um, uh, a lot of what they're thinking. So sustainability is staying a business, because that's important for them, while also staying true to cooperative principles and values. And they really care about that and finding ways to integrate it. Um, and I put here interrogating the relationship between co-ops activities and the environment. I wouldn't say that they're very far um, along yet. They're really working with that. And, uh, Cove Atlantic has a tool that they're using. But that whole idea of the human and natural environment. 
Again, um, the Sustainability Solutions Group, which is a consulting firm and does work in the area of sustainability, um, I really like their diagram, um, their, their nested approach. Um, it's a little different from the triple bottom line that sees you know, sort of three silos. Um, and so again, this is on their website if you want, but the economy is embedded in society, society in turn um, is embedded in the, in the, uh, in the ecology of the, of the environment. So just quickly through our, um, uh, you know, our goals. So number one was to define and measure and prioritize factors that make cooperatives unique from the perspective of the groups we worked with, provide information useful for strategic planning. And that took us about three years <laughs> to do this. Um, it's complete, more or less. It will be evolving, of course, but it's ready and with help from the pilot project cooperatives, it's structured in terms of the seven co-op principles and then some resonance with what uh, Jessica was saying, economic measures, social measures, environmental measures. And then we're packaging that in with two surveys, um, an employee survey and a member uh, customer survey. And basically there are um, 131 practices, as we call them, and each of those practices has uh, indicators that are used to measure whether or not these practices are being followed. Um, this is the Excel version. I don't expect you to be able to read that, but it gives you a sense of these are the, the number is the basic practice. The one in orange is an associated practice for co-ops that want to dig a little bit deeper. And so that's all indicated. Um, we're moving to a web-based version, as you'll hear later. Um, at, the, at the request of the co-ops, the, uh, the Excel version is too unwieldy for them. Um, and uh, one of the columns is priority. And you'll hear why that's important, because the cooperatives themselves, um, as part of doing this, decide which practices are of a high priority at this particular point in their history. Um, who does the work? Uh, some combination of board and management and a volunteer committee. Um, but also, um, we're hoping over time to engage more stakeholders, in, uh, including employees and members, in ways other than just surveys. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's this idea of, again, primary stakeholders moving out into the, the broader uh, stakeholders of community, uh, suppliers, and so on. So it's quite a flexible tool that will enable them to do some of that. A second goal is to work with Co-op Atlantic and Co-ops to support the use of the tools. So we're doing quite a bit of work around that right now as we're rolling it out. Um, we want to assess their experience with the process, um, including the factors that impede or um, promote uh, the take up of the tools. So that's going to be an important part of actually the research process. Um, and the ways in which it feeds into the, the planning process. You may have heard in other sessions that we, we do these things and then they, they tend to sit on a shelf and, and so we want to, to look at that. Um, and obviously make improvements and changes uh, as needed during the course of the, the next two and a half years. Thirdly, and this I think is of great interest to the cooperatives too, is the building, aggregating the data um, to get a sense of the retail cooperatives in the region. Um, uh, and develop regional benchmarks or, uh, for performance on the various measures, um, analyze patterns of performance on the cooperative difference, uh, and even maybe compare what we see with co-ops with what we're seeing with SOBEs and Loblaws and other organizations that are producing social reports. Um, analyze the impact on the, a range of, of stakeholders insofar as this tool is able to measure that. We also want to strengthen the community of cooperative sustainability and planning practice, a, a language that's often used is, is contribute to the building of a community of practice. And we'd like to go beyond the region if we can, and, and, and that was one of the reasons that the Atlantic Cluster um, was involved in organizing these, uh, these measurement sessions. Um, because the idea is to collaborate with interested other cooperatives and researchers using different tools, whether in the retail sector um, in Canada or, or abroad. That's our, our, uh, our longer term home. And this is, a, actually this is I think, my last slide. Um, we, uh, this just shows you sort of the next year. So the AGM 2012, um, we're in, in the process of recruiting cooperatives to use the tool over the fall and winter. Actually, we're not in the process. Don't tell my university. Um, we're not in the process. That's, that's good. That's good because I haven't got through ethics yet. But we will. We will. Um, Analyze the data and prepare reports, obviously, um, do preliminary analysis of the aggregated data, collectively reflect on um, 
not just the researchers in Cook Atlantic, but the, the, the co-ops that are participating in this, uh, their experience in using the tool to, to go to the next iteration. Um, and um, one of the other interesting things is that André Leclerc has been working with um, uh, uh, the uh, Caisse Populaire in, uh, in New Brunswick, uh, doing an employee survey that has uh, similarities to uh, overlap with, what, with what's happening in the consumer sector. So there's, there's some potentials opening up, you know, for... for, for